Tom Ogden reckons <laughs> if you bite your nails, you get appendicitis. It's that simple. <laughs> Don't bite your nails. <laughs> Okay, here we are at Margaret Court Arena with Def Havana. I have James and Matt here, and we are Overdrive Magazine. So guys, you've been uh, down in Australia, you played the Adelaide show, how did that go? It was, it was really cool, man. It was, uh, yeah, it was, I guess we were kind of jet lagged, so it was a bit of a blur, but it was a good laugh. Yeah, it was awesome. It seemed to go down really well, and uh, yeah. I wouldn't say really well. Wow. As well as you can expect as, yeah, a, as a support well. act. Yeah, I mean, you know everyone's coming to see Placebo, so to get any kind of reaction at all is pretty good, so yeah, nice. Yeah, and we did a side, we did, we played like our her own headline show last night in, in Melbourne. It was all, that was really, really good, it was a lot of fun. Brilliant, so um, you released your latest album earlier this year, how are you finding that people are taking to the newer material? Seems to be, uh, to be fair, this has been like probably the most well received record we've ever yeah. released, I mean. It always seems to go down well live, um, yeah, immediately almost, like our first few shows after we release a record, which um, is promising always, but um, it's just continued, it's been awesome, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, like, I don't really know what we were expecting, because we had like quite a long absence before it, and we kind of we kind of just released it because we wanted to release a record, we didn't really know if anyone was going to even remember who we were, but it was like, the. I know chart positions don't mean anything, but it was like the highest charting record we've ever had, it was like the the most records we've sold. It was just, it seems to be like the most well received one, so pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, that is definitely very cool. Um, so the Ding Dong Lounge, your first headline show in Australia, I believe. Um, so what was the difference in vibe playing that as opposed to the placebo and sound wave shows? Um, the, it was, it's obvious, obviously the first thing is that it's people that actually have come to see us who know who we are. So it's a bit more of like a instant, Sweatier connection. It's a lot sweatier. It's a lot. I love those kind of like. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It was like the perfect sort of venue, I think, to play our first headline show in Australia because it's um, it's quite small. But it, I was still blown away by the fact that we had anyone even know who we are, let alone care. And the fact that there were actually quite a few was awesome. It was it was the most fun I think we've all had on a stage for a while because we've been um, we've been doing for the last like five months just festival shows across the UK and throughout Europe and whatever which is great but like after a while you do begin to tire of just because it, it's always such a rush of like having to rush to get on stage and then off stage and it's, it's, it's great that you get to play to new people and to such well potentially bigger audiences but then to come back and finally play a headline show after that it was like yeah yeah that's that's what it's about like it was, it was awesome yeah a second what you said <laughs> um, so Unfortunately, the Perth show um, had to be cancelled um, due to illness. Apparently, getting rescheduled. Um, is there opportunity for you guys to stick around and um, you know play with Placebo on that show, or do you guys need to head back? Um, my wife's got a visa appointment on the 17th, so I probably won't be able to play it. But these guys are more than welcome to do it without me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It depends when it is. It depends if uh, depends if it's like on the yeah if it's, if it's workable. Then yeah, but can't then can't probably done. not. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much a, a watch this space then. Yeah. Um, so so what is the best thing about being back in Australia? We love I don't know just Australia basically the whole country is awesome. It's the last time we had such a good experience, and I mean it's a little different now because it's obviously not summer and it's not hot. But who, I don't really care. Like I love Australian people. I love. I just love it here. It's so. It feels. It's quite similar to England, I think. Like people's attitudes and humour. I don't know. Just little things. It, I don't feel like I'm miles away from home, even though I am. I feel like almost like I could be back in England. It's just an awesome place. I agree. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we love it. Yeah, it is quite a different experience to say going to the US. I mean, I know. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. Like some parts of America, you can feel like I, I've never felt so alienated and so like alone it's just some of it is insane <laughs> yeah they don't really get sarcasm too well east on coast, east coast right. is there but like but like in texas for instance if i try and tell some like sarcastic jokes they don't really it's like tumbleweed in the room that was that was fun <laughs> but i don't know <laughs> maybe i should stop telling those jokes nah, nah. <laughs> it's quite funny when i was over in london 
the people there tended to think that I was from Birmingham. <laughs> For some reason, maybe I, maybe I sound like Ozzy Osbourne. I don't, I don't know. But then then I tell them that I was from Australia, and the, and the reaction would change. I'd be like, oh, in that case, you're doing quite well. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, of course. Um, <laughs> So last time we spoke, um, you were telling me about um, writing on the road. Um, so has that um, been something that's been happening on this tour? Have you had much time or has there been much inspiration uh, coming out as you've travelled? Uh, not really. I think we've just, it was such like a, it's such a long journey. It's, it was, um, we've only just got over the jet lag. I yeah, think. we've only just got over the jet lag and we're still a bit like zombified. But um, I don't know, we have a couple of like, because on planes I'm not that like, great, like, I hate, I despise flying. So I just have to like, I don't know, get hammered and like, or do something to distract myself from the fact that I'm flying through the air in a metal tube. So I don't really, I'm not relaxed enough to like write stuff, but we have a couple of like transfers where we're driving between cities. So I, I mean, I normally do, so I probably will, but so far we've kind of just been a bit like, but um, yeah, I don't know, I feel pretty, I feel alright today. Maybe I will. <laughs> Probably just going to go out later though. Not write anything. Well, or just do something to write about. There we go. Making memories. Yep, doing double duty there. I like. I like the plan. I like the plan. Um, so, on tour, what gear do you bring with you that is an absolute must-have? Well, like uh, uh, musical equipment. Yeah. Um, Guitars. Yeah, I'm not that fussy about stuff. Like I could easily play a show without like. F foot pedals they're just a luxury I, I I brought them with me but I don't yeah I'm not as long as I can bring like my jazz master to play I'm not that bothered like, I'm pretty I'm not that I'm not that fussy but yeah I'd like to bring, ideally bring my own guitar that would be pretty cool but I don't know it's like it's hard because it's incredibly expensive to like fly amplifiers and stuff so we obviously we've just bought like stuff that we could carry and like I don't know, foot pedals and, and guitars but yeah but my guitar I, I, I bring everywhere with me yeah, spot on really, I'm exactly the same. I mean, there's a few songs where I need certain pedals, but that could be sourced over here. The only yeah, thing I'd really need to bring... You're using a bit more than me. I don't, I don't, my guitar's sound is basic. I just pretty much have one guitar sound, but you, you, you do use a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the guitar's the main thing, for sure, I think. Awesome. And when it comes to things aside from your musical gear, are there any sort of must-haves that you've got to um, pack when you come on a you know a big trek, especially like coming all the way to Australia? For me, the main thing is like headphones, just so I can listen to music all the time or, or watch films. I don't know, like I'm not that I'm not that sentimental, so I don't really have any. I don't really have anything that I I don't have like a lucky I don't know. A lot of people have like stuff that they um, can't live without, but I don't. I don't I'm pretty easy going. As long as I, as long as I've got headphones and as long as I can clean pants, yeah. I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy. Uh, nail clippers. Nail clippers. Hundred percent. What? My fingernails grow. Bite them then. I don't bite my fingernails. I do. There we go then. Oh, it's, it's the Dave Lister approach, isn't it? <laughs> That's easy. Just grow them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Good. What? Like a calcium what, pill. What, you, what did you... 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 What the fuck do you mean? What did you buy the name? How can it possibly lead to appendicitis? You are essentially a bacteria. And you, especially you, I see. Yeah. Sweet. I, I, the only thing I've heard yeah. is you get worms. I don't give a shit, I'm not going to fuck it. That's exactly, <laughs> that's what I said. Playing with words. I wash my hands <laughs> regularly. <laughs> I reckon you're talking bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Please do, please. Google knows. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. You heard it here first. Overdrive is not a qualified <laughs> medical journal, but we have it on reasonably good authority. <laughs> Tom Ogden reckons if you bite your nails, you get appendicitis. It's that simple. <laughs> Don't bite your nails. <laughs> um, 
Okay, on, on the other side of packing as opposed to what you bring here, is there anything special you'll be taking home with you from Australia? Um, a koala bit? I don't know. Something cool. I don't know. No, probably not. I, I, I like, I don't know, I'm not that, again, I'm not that sentimental, unless I see something really like, like the only thing I've ever brought back is like, I don't know, if I see like, like for instance I was in Belize and I, this like Mayan guy was selling like hand carved Mayan calendars, so I brought that back. So if I found something like really traditionally Australian, maybe I would, but I don't know, I'm not sure. And I'm, I'm, I always intend to do that and then I just forget about it because I, I think about stupid stuff like, Biting your nails leads to appendicitis. I've got my attention span is so short. As soon as I get an idea, I forget about it in ten seconds. What are you? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I've, I've never really t taken anything. An Australian passport would be nice, so I can live here and come back yeah. whenever I want. I agree. I agree. That's probably not going to happen, is it? Probably not. <laughs> Just don't go try getting a job in the Australian Parliament because we're having a lot of issues with that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and don't try and take the sand home with you either. That's a big no-no. Really? Yeah. Don't take the sand from the beaches. I know, I know, right? I know, right? Who's taking sand? <laughs> what about if you accidentally get All right, Mum, just coming back. What have you got? Got a load of sand from Perth. Like it's in your shoe. Where shall we? Like it's in your shoe and it accidentally so goes in your bag. If you want to try and convince the Australian Border Force that that's what happened, I won't take any responsibility for that. I will not be doing that. I'm scared. <laughs> Authoritative figures scare me. <laughs> um, Sydney coming up next. Yes. Um, so for fans who will be seeing you both at Placebo and at your other headliner, what differences can they expect in terms of things like you know, set list? Uh, obviously, don't want you to give away any sort of surprises, but uh, yeah. What, what, what um, well, obviously, the, on the Placebo shows, we obviously we only have like a, a shorter allocated time, so we have to kind of, and also we tend to kind of tailor the set to more gear towards Placebo fans, I guess. So we'll we'll play, I don't know, songs that. And maybe sound slightly more similar to them, but on the headline show, we're up for anything. Like we we do have a, a set that we that we'll write out. But like last night, we some people were like shouting requests, and we just we played about three or four, just because I was like, we're in Australia. When are we going to come back? These people have come to see us, and we're on the other side of the world. We might as well play what they're asking for. But it's just a lot more chilled out. Like a headline show is always, always way more chilled out because it's it'll obviously be a smaller venue, so it won't be as like. I don't know, as sort of legit as this is. This is quite this is quite like big shows like this are very, very well organised. And the smaller one will just be a bit more chilled out, like go on at ten if you want. It's just be a bit <laughs> But it, like I had a lot of I had a lot of fun last night, so I reckon if it's if it's the same as that it'll just be it'll just be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much spot on. I, don't why too enthusiastic. Well, don't hand it to me when you've covered everything. Mm, Alright. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, it's more chilled out and a lot of good vibe, I hope. A couple of beers, a couple of tunes. Chill out a bit. <laughs> Be awesome. Brilliant. Um, so aside from the obvious um, with Perth, are there any other major challenges that you've encountered on this run? <laughs> jet lag. Jet lag, but also there's no alcohol on this tour, which is fine. But we, we like we like beer. Yeah. We like drinking beer and chilling out. But it's fine. It's it's probably good for us. But it's just a bit like. It's not a challenge, it's just different to what we're used to. But yeah, I don't know, the main thing I guess was jet lag, because like the, today's the first day that, even yesterday by about like 10 p.m. I was like about to fall asleep. Today's, today will probably be fine, but yeah, jet lag was probably the main, the main challenge. And also the fact that we have to fly every day, like I don't, I don't like flying. And it's like, cool, another flight. Even though they're only like an hour. But the Australian airports are so nice. nicer than the ones we've So organised. Yeah. Everyone's people know how exactly to go through security doing. over here. Whereas in England, you've always in got England, like you're always getting, yeah. a 55-year-old Burke who can't like unpack his bag or tries to walk through with five belts on. On the way here, I'm not even joking, on the way here, there was a bloke. <laughs> there was a bloke in the airport and he tried to get hand luggage. This was in his hand luggage. He had a Frey Bentos pie. <laughs> And a fire extinguisher <laughs> in his carry-on luggage. See it in the face of the guy, like, it was just like, mate, come over. I, like, we were we were putting our stuff, and I heard this bloke go, "No, you got, you can't go mate, through, mate. You got a pie." He went, "What?" He went, "You've got, got a Frey Bentos pie." pie. I was like, what, what, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, but that was it, he's though. carrying. Oh, why are you bringing that? He's also like, "What's this doing in it?" He's got <laughs> pulled a bloody fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, but yeah, you don't get that over here, I don't think. Uh, well, well, I haven't seen it. Very organised. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is a little bit out of order, yeah. um, I must say. This is weird. Why are you bringing a pie? 
That's an oversight on his. Unless it's love fray. Then you can't get him there. He probably wasn't coming there. Well, there's got to be some songwriting inspiration in there. You know, the pie, the fire extinguisher, yeah. fingernail-related appendicitis. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all happening. Oh, that's good. Like next record's just going to be funny joke songs that from ridiculous experiences, or about things that Thomas David Ogden says are true that probably are. Oh, I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so after this, you've got a uh, pretty extensive UK run. Uh, yeah. Any commentary on that um, since it's you know, what's coming up? Yeah, just doing like a three-week tour in November, I believe. It just yeah. it's going to be. It, it's, it's not really like major cities because we kind of did that at the start of the year. It's just like more. I don't know, what would you call them? B towns, I guess. But it should be cool. We have got some cool bands coming with us. Black Foxes and Decade. Check them out. They're good. But yeah, I'm. Just, I'm tr I like. The last the last headline. What was the last headline tour? The European uh, one. Uh, yeah. That was really fun. So yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. Like Matty said, like it's a nice relief from festival season because festival season is a bit like Detective. it's a bit soul soul destroying after a while because you do. I don't know. But yeah, we're just looking forward to doing it again. It'll be awesome. Hopefully it'll sell okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> if it doesn't, we're doing something wrong because the venue's only about 300 people. So <laughs> nah, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. I literally just noticed the all-seeing eye um, as part of your sleeve there. Oh, right. um, yeah, if it's okay to talk about, um, yeah, why why that particular symbol? Because I know it's got a lot of uh, meaning yeah. behind it. Um, no idea. N none of my tattoos have any like. I uh, I basically lived with my friend who was a tattooist for ages, and he used to just tattoo. My, all my tattoos are pretty awful. Well, apart from like that's pretty good, and my hands are alright. But I actually I didn't even know he did it until about. I didn't even know it was an all-seeing eye until about a month later, so, hmm, yeah, this, I should should have come up with a good story, but I have no, it doesn't, I don't even know what it means, I don't, I'm not into the Illuminati or anything, I just, I don't even think I looked at, he drew up the design, I don't even think I okayed it before he did it, I just went, yeah, go on, slap it on, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, I don't have any cool meanings behind that. <laughs> Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> it's obviously a conspiracy on the part of your tattooist. Yeah. See on the explanation. Yeah, trying to... <laughs> We're probably just about reaching the end of our time with you, so before we um, sign off, is there any uh, last things you'd like to share with our uh, Overdrive viewers? Thanks for letting us come back in your amazing country, and we love you. Thanks, Beautiful. man. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Sorry, I'm a bit weird. <laughs> Believe me, we'll take weird over boring any time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>